see some examples. So the first example, so let us take uh, V equals uh, Rn with the norm 1. So remember, so norm x1 is sigma i equals 1 to n mod xi, where x is the vector x1, xn. So in short notation, Rn with norm 1, we will use the symbol ln1. Okay. W any norm linear space. and t from ln1 to w a linear map then t is continuous so every linear map from ln1 into any norm linear space is automatically continuous so how do we show this so let us take ei to be the standard basis vector. So this is 1 in the ith place and 0 elsewhere. Then every x can be written as sigma i equals 1 to n xi here. Yeah. Therefore tx by linearity is sigma i equals 1 to n xi tei. So now let us take uh, k to be the max of norm tei in w 1 less than equal to i less than equal to n. Now by the triangle inequality you get that norm tx in w is less than or equal to sigma i equals 1 to n mod xi norm tei in w which is less than equal to k times sigma mod xi which is nothing but norm x1 and therefore by the definition of continuity t is a continuous map. So this shows that every linear map from ln1 to any norm linear space is automatically continuous. Second example let us take v equals little lp 1 less than equal to p uh, so let me just take 1 less than p less than infinity so x would be a sequence xi okay and you know that sigma mod xi power p is finite so let p star be the conjugate exponent that means 1 by p plus 1 by p star equal to 1 then define f of x as equal to sigma i equals 1 to infinity xi yi where y equals yi belongs to L p star. Then this is a linear functional. Okay. First of all, is it well defined? It is because mod fx is less than or equal to sigma i equals 1 to infinity mod xi yi which is less than or equal to by Helder inequality norm xp norm y p star. So this is Helder's inequality. Therefore, this is not only well defined, it tells you that this is a continuous linear function. So, this implies that f is a continuous linear functional and norm of f is less than or equal to norm y in p star. 
One of the theorems which we will prove in this course is that every continuous linear functional on LP will occur in this way. This is the only way, these are the only functionals and in fact you have equality here norm f equal to norm y p star and therefore you can say that the dual space v star of l p is nothing but l p star. That is why we have given the conjugate exponent that notation p star because v star is in fact l p star. This is a theorem which we will ultimately prove. So, this gives you an example of a continuous linear function. So, now let us, so we have given an example in finite dimensions, an example in function uh, sequence spaces. So, now let us look at function spaces. So, let us take C01 to be our base space V norm, remember this is a soup norm. So, norm F here is the max X in 0, 01 mod fx. Okay, so now let k from 0, 1 cross 0, 1 to r continuous. So, we take a continuous function in two variables. Then we define for f in v, f is a continuous function. I am going to define another function. So, tf, tf is also a function on 0, 1. So, tf on t is equal to integral 0 to s k s t f of s d s. So, this is called a Volterra integral operator. So, we want to show two things. One is that T f belongs to V and T from V to V is continuous. Its linear is clear. So, we want to show these two things. Okay. So, K is continuous on the compact set 0, 1 cross 0, 1. So, it is uniformly continuous and bounded. So, let us say we have that mod of K of S T is less than or equal to some constant K. Okay. Also, given any epsilon positive, it is uniformly continuous. Therefore, there exists a delta such that mod S1 minus S2 less than delta implies mod KS1 T minus KS2 T is less than epsilon for all T. In fact, much more is true. We are using very little of the uniform continuum. You can also vary T within some similar delta but I am not, I am going to take it only for a fixed t. So, now we take t f at s 1 minus t f at s 2. Substitute and then if you rearrange, so you can, you can check this. This is 0 to s 1 k of s 1 t minus k of s 2 t. f of t dt ok I think uh, let's see. so this is s and here Sorry for that. Okay. Ft dt plus uh, 
integral s2 to s1 k of s2 dt f of t dt. So, I have just added and subtracted things so, and so if you write out the two formulae you will get this. So, therefore, mod tf of s1 minus tf of s2 if mod s1 minus s2 is less than delta. So, this will be less than or equal to from this is less than epsilon by what we have just said because s1 minus s2 is less than delta, we can pull out the ft as norm f, the supremum can be taken out. So, you just get s1 uh, 0 to s1 here. So, you get epsilon times norm f into s1 plus s k is less than or equal to delta, uh, sorry, k is less than or equal to, is bounded. So, this is less, less than or equal to k, s1 minus s, then again you have norm f and then you have delta. So, the whole thing is less than or equal to 1 plus k times norm f. So, I am assuming that delta and epsilon are both less than 1 that is without loss of generality and therefore, this is uh, times epsilon sorry and therefore, this shows that T f is a continuous function and also you have that mod T f of s is less than equal to k times norm f times s which is less than equal to k times norm f and if you take the maximum of over s you get that norm t f is less than equal to k times norm f. Therefore, this tells you that this operator or mapping which we define t, so t from v to v is continuous and linear. Okay, so, we have seen some examples. of mappings which are continuous linear mappings. So, let me give you finally an example of a mapping which is not continuous but linear. So, let me take C1 0 1. So, this is continuously differentiable maps uh, functions 0 1 to R. So, we put the same norm after this is a subset or subspace of C01 and therefore, we can put the same norm, this is a subspace. So, now we define T from C101 to C01 both with the same sup norm and T of F, T of F is F dash the first derivative because every function here is differentiable and the derivative is continuous. So, this makes sense. So, I want to show that this is not, uh, uh, this is a linear map, but this is not continuous. So, let us take f n of t equals t power n. Then what is t f n of t? So, this is n times t to the n minus 1 because it is just the derivative. So, norm of f n which is the maximum of t, t power n in 0, 1, this is 1. And what is the norm of t of f n? This is n. So, we can never have a con, we can never have an inequality like this. Because if we put f equals f n, the left hand side will be n less than or equal to k for all n that is impossible because n tends to infinity, k is a fixed number. So, this is an example of a mapping which is not a continu a continuous mapping, but which is nevertheless linear. Okay, so, now we will look at some other properties like isomorphism 
uh, of uh, between non-linear spaces.